art. We all love it. There's so many positives that art brings to the world, like making our surroundings more interesting, more colorful, or just a little bit more fun. Art is important for city architecture, design, or just making pretty pictures that people can admire or decorate their homes with. But there are some negatives to art as well, especially around making it. I'm talking about those times when we can't seem to create what we have in our heads. Something's just off. Something's not right. Art block can be a frustrating time for any artist or creative, no matter your level. So a while back, I've had pretty severe art block. And if you ever had art block, you know it's not fun, not even a little bit. You feel like you can't draw, nothing comes out right. You get frustrated and you wanna quit. And sometimes it's actually what you need to do. Uh, slow down, no, no, not no. quit. But give yourself uh, a little creative brain break. Step away from what you're doing and, you know, rest, rest and relax a little bit. Use a different part of your brain. Before we can talk about how to deal with art block, first we need to know what is art block and how does it work? What, what causes it to happen? In simple terms, it's when you can't draw, paint or write or make anything to the same level that you're usually, you're used to making. Something doesn't look right. You can't get your drawings to come out the way you want, et cetera, et cetera, that kind of thing. This can be frustrating. It can lead to you questioning your ability or even sometimes uh, to you giving up, putting art down for good, which, you know, for artists, it's not a good thing. Art block should not cause you to stop making art. There have been way, way, way too many artists that have given up art because of, you know, this condition, if you want to call it that. So if you're having art block, know that it happens to everyone and you shouldn't stop drawing. Don't let it stop you. Okay, so what causes it? Now that we know what art block is, let's find out why it happens. So a little note from cognitive neuroscientist, Heather Berlin at the Icon School of Medicine at Mount Sinai. She says, we know a little bit about what's going on. Berlin studies neuroscience of imagination, creativity, and improvisation. And for those people who might be facing writer's block, there's really no prescribed medication, Berlin says. There's no real magic pill. Yeah, unfortunately. You have to take it in. You have to, you have to take in all the information and then go for a walk, Berlin says. Go out, do something else, because those people who sit there and just obsess over thinking about art block too much, using your prefrontal cortex, you're actually limiting yourself. So letting it go and actually, so letting it go can actually help you get over it. There are so many reasons for art block, for just about any reason. Some ways to deal with art block are, work through it. For those that can't afford to stop or take a break or step away from their, from making art anyway, because you know, it's your job and you know, it's what pays the bills. Sometimes the best medicine for art block is to just work through it. The first attempt may not come out the way you expect. So you might have to redraw multiple times a piece that might usually take you two or three hours might end up taking a lot longer, a lot longer depending on how bad you have it and how long you've been um, dealing with it because with art block when it's fresh, it's it's worse in some ways than you know if you experience it for maybe a, a few weeks instead of a few days. You might have to work through it, redraw it and redo it as many times as possible this isn't fun, but you know, if you have to stick to that schedule, that may just be the fastest way to get out of a rut. Take a break. If you can step away, then taking a break from art might seem like a no brainer, but if you're like me, yeah, that's not an easy thing to do. I'm too stubborn sometimes to just stop when things aren't going the way I expect them to go or the way I want them to go, but stepping away from making art, or it can be exactly what your brain needs. Yes, sometimes you just need that time away. Um, sometimes your brain is just working too much and you need to take a break, just like, you know, your body. If you go to the gym, you know, every day, you're gonna get tired, you need that recovery time. It's the same thing with your brain. You draw with your brain more than you draw with your hands. Other creative outlets. This can be anything, just do something else to engage the creative side of your brain. You know, we've all heard about the analytical side of your brain and your creative side of the brain. So 
Sometimes it's just good to switch over um, using a different side of your brain or just, you know, find other creative pursuits. Instead, she says, creativity depending on which part of your brain you might be using. So it's sometimes good to switch it up. It's good to remember that art isn't made in a vacuum. To continue to make art, you sometimes need to consume other, you know, art forms or other, other media, video games, TVs, books you know sometimes just watching other people draw i can't tell you how many times i've struggled with something art related only to pick up a controller uh, read a book or just you know went for a walk and got my creative juices flowing again some of the best works i've produced was when i start uh, i stepped away from uh making art for a while and just came back refresh you know sometimes you need to step away from the easel or the sketchbook or you know your drawing tablet whatever it is and just go out into the world and get lost, then come back and, uh, you know, look at things with a fresh eye, you know? Uh, think about it like when you're drawing and you step away from a draw, you, you're drawing, you're looking at the same image for hours and hours and hours and end, and you step away and come back, maybe a few hours or a few days, and you look at that piece and you go, wow, okay, these are all, the, all these mistakes I couldn't see before. So, you know, I, art block, it's similar to that where like you stepping away from art, you've been drawing continuously nonstop. Sometimes it's good to just step away and just not think about art for like a few days in the instances you can. I mean, um, again, if you're working for somebody else and you're on a schedule that might not be possible, but if you can, that will definitely help with the art block. Cause like we said, art block is not fun at all all one of the things that i really like doing is watching other artists drawing and painting seeing their processes or getting a, a peek of sketchbooks also help like one of the one of the best things uh for me on youtube to watch on youtube is just like doing sketchbook tours and it's just like it just doesn't matter if like it's if it's an art style that i like or you know i draw like them or whatever or even if they're a beginner artist or more advanced professional whatever just like seeing how other artists draw, seeing their process, seeing what kind of materials they like to use, graphite, uh, charcoal, wash, watercolor, whatever it is. Just watching that, I've yet to watch one where like I've finished watching it and then not wanted to like pick up a, a at least like pick up a sketchbook and draw myself, right? To create something. So watching other people draw for you might be somebody that you, an artist that you like, uh, or just like discovering a new art form, you know, that will like unlock that part of the brain that's just in that rut that you just need to get out of um but here's one that we do not talk about enough and that is sleep let's be realistic if you're an artist you probably do not get enough sleep like for whatever reason i don't know it's if if it's because we're like some of us are, uh, are night owls or we need to be productive or we need to you know get something or do something it's like sleep is the enemy of many of us artists just go take a nap real go 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 take a nap pause this if you need to go take a nap and then come back no but seriously um in society we tend to romanticize art making um you know from the old school narrative of artists should struggle we should be depressed we should live in poverty uh, you know because for some reason people tend to think that makes good art like um what was it van gogh or Van Gogh cutting off his ear, romanticizing that, like, oh, oh, because that, that's what made him a good artist. It wasn't, it, it, you know, it wasn't his understanding of anatomy and color and light and all that. It was because, you know, he cut off his ear and he was a little bit, um, you know, gone in the head like most artists are anyways. But it's, it, it, it's silly, you know what I mean? It's Sleep is definitely one of those things that we need more of. The world that we live in now, like people talking about how little sleep they get, they think it's a flex, which I don't understand. Like like being sleep, sleep deprived is not a flex. It's It's stupid. It's not good, right? We don't make better arts when we're tired. Arts. We don't make better art when we're tired, stressed, or when we, you know, have to concentrate on things that other than art, just like any other profession, right? It's like, do you do your job better when you're tired and you're stressed out? No, of course not. You do, you, you work better when you're like, you're relaxed. Another major contributor to art block is perfectionism. Something that is really talked about when we talk about art in general, but even more so when we talk about art block is, you know, being a perfectionist. Perfectionist comes natural to many artists. 
we agonize over every little details sometimes ones that really don't even matter when you in in terms of the whole picture letting go of making every mark perfect or having to produce our absolute best is something sometimes what causes our art block it's only natural to mess up or make mistakes you know or make works that are sometimes not as good but that's how you learn that's how you grow you that's how you get better you know um perfectionism i think it has its place but it definitely has its place but perfectionism is a double-edged sword sometimes it's better to just put something out there that you know you're 75 percent comfortable with or okay with it and then just move on right because you know what you've learned from that image you'll carry it on to the next one and you'll just be that much better with the next drawing or painting or writing or whatever it is that you're doing but perfectionism is it, it it's it's a serious topic in in the lot that not only not only does it limit us many times but again it's one of those things where in society we tend to romanticize it as if like perfection being a perfectionist is something to try to attain having high standards is a good thing putting out quality work is a good thing sometimes being a perfectionist can be the opposite of that it can cause you to make um, worse work than if you weren't a perfectionist and sometimes we do end up making it better but a lot of times you end up making it worse don't be a perfectionist try to do quality work but perfectionism is i think it's a, a bit too far i think once you get to the, get to the point where you're getting into nitty-gritty and you're you know being nitpicky i think that's where you need to pull back and go okay this might not be making my work better and we come to comparison this one's universal it's so easy to compare ourselves to others especially with social media it's only natural to see amazing artists online and think damn am i as good as them or can i do that would i be able to do that you know am i good enough never do this and that can cause us to doubt ourselves you should only compare yourself to you you know ask yourself have i gotten better have i learned anything since the last you know since last week or the last couple of days that i drew or you know after a month you know how much prog a month or two months or whatever and how much progress you have i made if i made some progress no matter how small it is that's a good thing and i think that's good in its own you know it's the, the the thing is making progress and on the topic of progress it's not linear right you will feel like you've made a, a jump and leap one day and then the other day you feel like you haven't really moved much and sometimes you might even feel like um you've taken a step back but you know stick with it stay with the process um what we need to understand is um every artist take your favorite artist um, artists that you like, artists that you don't like, artists that, you know, maybe just be popular or maybe work for some of the bigger companies. They were all in your position at one time. You know, we've all had uh, imposter syndrome. We all know that as an artist, keep doing what you were doing. Stay focused. Art is hard. It takes time. It takes practice. And you're never going to have all the answers. Our art, art block is something that every artist experiences at some point or another. And just like any other problems, that we would come across as artists, uh, we have to find solutions to deal with those problems, right? We got to find either to work with it, incorporate it, or work around it. Well, this is not all the ways you can deal with art block. Um, for some, two or three of these will work. For others, you might need to try all of them, maybe some more. Dealing with art block is not a one size fit all. Kind of thing you know you might one solution might work for you even you know and it, something else will work for somebody else point is art block is natural it has nothing to do with you how good you are as an artist it's just your body sometimes telling you like it's probably time to take a break